This is The Logic Show. And what I'm going to be focusing on for the next couple of weeks, next few weeks, is um, hip hop. So we're going to start talking about how to make like trap beats, how to make, you know, contemporary hip hop beats, also like classic hip hop beats. What up, Blue Sirens? Um, and yeah, that's what we're going to be focusing on. Now, also, what we're going to be talking about, you know, a lot of the time kind of peppered in is some of the newer features in Logic 10.5. So some of you may or may not be aware that there was an update to Logic. I uh, highly recommend getting it. It's really cool. There's a bunch of really new powerful instruments that they gave us and a bunch of new interesting workflows that they've kind of allowed us to start exploring. So without any further ado, let's jump into uh, the stream. Now, I should also mention if by some miracle some of you have been <laughs> here right now that haven't joined us before. Um, we, 343 Labs is a school based out of New York City. We are a music production school. We offer classes in person and online. Obviously, right now, we're not offering classes in person. But um, we have a you know, strong presence online. We have a lot of tutorials up. We've been doing these live streams for over a month now. Um, and you know, we offer tons of classes in different uh, subjects we do Ableton logic mixing mastering songwriting sound design uh, you know you name it so if you're interested in taking classes with us you know uh, please visit the website 343labs.com and uh, if you dig the content you know subscribe to our channel all right so without with all that being said without any further ado let's just get into some music production in logic uh, again, if you are still here in the chat, drop a line. So, uh, you know, feel free to ask some questions, ask me to, you know, talk about certain things. I'm very open to that. So just opening up logic, there are a couple of new things that you should be aware of with this 10.5 update. First of all, we get this guy right here, all right? So we've never had either of these icons before. This icon represents the arrangement icon. And this icon represents the loops grid, which is a new feature of Logic that cough, cough, they stole from Ableton. But that's okay, because it works really, really well, and I love it. Um, so what this is, is it is a basically an infinite loop kind of playground. So if you've never used Ableton, one of the cool things about Ableton is that there's this thing called session view. And what it allows you to do is create a loop that will play forever. It'll just never stop. So you might be thinking, why would I want to do that? Well, the reason that's useful is so that you can compose without feeling any kind of constrictions around your arrangement at all, right? So if you are like, okay, I want to make some music, uh, I want to come up with a cool idea, but I don't have any idea yet like what the structure of it's going to be, sometimes it can actually be you know, more of a hindrance to have to work in a structured format. Uh, and so it's a it's a cool way to just kind of create in a very loose sort of capacity, come up with you know, loops and ideas that you can then start putting together in the arrangement view. And so what we're actually gonna do today is I'm gonna start by exploring a, a new instrument that Logic has in this view. And so we're gonna work in this view initially to make a beat. So one of the coolest things that uh, they added to Logic is this thing called the drum synth. And so what the drum synth is, is exactly what it, you would imagine it is. So it allows you to create drums in a couple of different kit styles. So first you have a kick, right? And you have these different styles of kicks. We have the heavy kick, hard kick, punch kick, which silly name, doesn't sound punchy at all, air kick, and tight kick. So what I first want to do today is explore some of these kick drums, and we'll go through a bunch of the other kick, like kits as well, kit sounds, not kick, but kit sounds. And um, we'll explore those, but first I want to show you how to make an 808 out of this kick drum module. Now the cool thing about this is that 
as you can hear, it responds to pitch, so it responds to your keyboard. And so what I'm going to start with is I'm just going to start with a very basic 808 pattern. And so in order to use this loop view, all you have to do is hit record, and it's going to count you in, right? And it's going to allow you to record a loop. Now, it's only going to record for the amount of time that you actually record for. Let's see, what's that guy up there? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit record, and it's going to be the count in, and I'm going to play along with the metronome. And I'll hit pause. So if you play for a longer period of time, right, then what it'll do is it's kind of automatically going to adapt to a longer loop length. So if we hear what I played by pressing play here, so that's cool. And this is going to work like your normal piano roll. There's nothing magical about what's going on in here. Right? So. Now the cool thing about this also is that when you press pause, it's going to stop in line with where you were. You hit enter, and of course we'll start playing from the beginning. So let's say we want to take this kick and make it into, you know, an actual 808. Let's first explore some of what's going on in here. So first we have our pitch, right? Which is going to determine what the pitch is. So my recommendation to you is to keep it at zero because it's going to it's going to track to your key, right? So with key tracking on means it's going to going to go up the keyboard with us. Right? Key tracking off just means that it's going to be the same note every time. So my recommendation to you would be that if you want to make a kick drum out of this, you would actually take key tracking off and then tune it with this. But if you're looking to make an 808, which is you're going to want to be able to use it like a bass sound, you could turn the key tracking on. Right, and so that way you can actually start playing notes and treat it like a real bass line. So the first thing that we have in order to create like an 808 sound, right, is we have the saturation. So I don't like that, that's too saturated. That's pretty cool though. So the next thing we got is the shape knob. Basically what shape is going to do is give us more body the more we turn it up. So I like that right about there. And decay, of course, is just how long it's going to last. Which basically, I don't know why they would call this sweep, but it's it's sort of like how long and fat the transient is. So if you want a more classic 808, like from a drum machine sound, you can use that. And this is gonna give you, you know, a really smoother 808 sound. So you can probably use a kick with that a lot more easily. And the higher that the sweep is, the more kicky it kind of sounds, as opposed to a bass. So I'll keep it there for now. And last but not least, we have tone. And tone is just going to determine, I guess, how long the decay is of the kick. And I know you see decay there, you're like, wait, isn't that decay? This is a bad way label for decay because that's just supposed to be like the length. Uh, like the really I would call that more like the whole envelope. 
but um, tone here it just seems like it's going to give you a fatter tone the longer the higher it gets. So I dig that. And now as you can see, we have the mode set to mono. So what that means is, is that it's monophonic right now. I can only play one note at a time. Now if I put on to poly, right, I could actually play, sorry, that's a little loud. Some weird version of a chord. Anyway, so fun logic fact, if you hit option and click on a value, it goes back to its original value. All right, so let's go back down. I have it on poly mode, so they're going to overlap. So the cool thing about mono, too, is that the way a monophonic synthesizer works is it immediately chokes the previous note. Now, I got to tell you right off the bat, these drums sound really badass that are made from this uh, drum synth. Like, this is just not an advertisement for Logic. I would not use this if it didn't sound good. I think it sounds really good. So I'm going to slow this down. So there are two ways to go around really producing hip hop. You can do it at a lower BPM or you can do it at a higher BPM and work in halftime. So we're not going to talk about halftime today, but we'll get into halftime uh, the next round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to just for now probably keep it with just this key. Let's see. Let's see if we go up an octave. Let's see. I'm just going to keep it on one key for now. So that's just going to give us a C. Or are we working in C? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the, a, new, a new instrument, another new instrument called Sampler. Put it in stereo. So Sampler, let me find some samples. Ooh, I might not have them with me today. That's okay. Let's see. It's actually perfect. So let me set my computer output to there. There we go. So you can hear that. See that? So I like that one. So what I'm going to do is, Sampler is also another kind of instrument that they created to try to, you know, for being totally honest, you know, get on par with Ableton, kind of catch up a little bit in terms of some of their modern production tools. And so this is a really, really, really powerful instrument. I've been really digging it, and it's really easy to use. All you do is you take an audio sample and you drag it literally anywhere. And what happens is, is it's going to map to a particular key on your keyboard. And, uh, oh, hello, hola. And uh, what it's going to do is, is default going to map to C1. Right? It's going to also have velocity sensitivity embedded in it, which is super awesome. So basically, the way that this works is you can zoom in by you know, spreading your fingers, get really close to the start of the sound wave. So I'm going to want to make sure that the start of the sound wave is right there. And so to control this, you just click over this icon right here. It allows you to basically control where the loop, sorry, where the sample starts from. So I'll go right like that. Now I can zoom back out. And then you have a couple of different options for the, the trigger mode. So at first we have what's called gate mode. That's its default mode. 
Now you don't see that, it doesn't say that anywhere, but I just know that from using samples, samplers over the years. So what, what, a, what gate mode means is that however long you play the note for is how much of the audio sample is gonna be played. But if I put it on one shot, I can hit the note and it'll, I can let go and it will play the whole note. Now I also could put it in reverse mode, which is super sick. And I can do the one, mod, one shot mode in reverse. Now, one shot versus gate, you're not really gonna hear a huge difference in terms of this type of sample, because it's so short. But I'll show you very brief, very quickly on the next one. Now, what I can do is, is that this yellow line up here dictates the range that I have access to on this keyboard for this sample. So if I increase this, let's say up to C3, what this now means is I can go like this. Now one thing you might be hearing is that the notes get really short the higher up I go. Now that's a phenomenon of just naturally what occurs when you raise something in pitch. But of course we can work around that very easily. And Logic has of course foreseen this. So what they've done is they allowed you to put this in which is basically their flex time algorithm which is similar to Ableton's work algorithm for those of you that also are familiar with Ableton. All you do is you click this on and now So now it's going to stay at the same speed. You can hear that it's like, you know, getting a little bit mangled the higher we go. But if you have a whole octave that works, you know, or even half an octave, like a, a perfect fifth range that works well um, with the pitch, then that's, you know, it's a pretty solid starting point. So what I'll do is right now is I'm just going to program in a, so you can either record in, right, or you can just double click. At least I thought you could just double click. I was clearly wrong. Which is fine. So I'll just, you know, keep this guy. And then it, he doesn't think we finished recording. Okay, good. And let's now put in, I'm going to program in some hi-hats. So right now I'm just going to do a basic eighth note, eighth note groove. Let's see how that feels. Alright, so I want both of these to, let's see, quantize start, let's put on smart pickup. Alright, so I, want, I need to stop both of these. So one trick, first off the bat, for getting your hi-hats to sound more alive, right, is to reduce the velocity a little bit on some of them. So I'm going to hit enter, right, so here, if you hit stop right here, it stops all the cells, and you can just restart from the uh, get-go. So I'll just click here, right, and this will trigger the entire row. So we can hear the difference between so stop so they go back to zero and then so that's kind of boring or not boring but it's one way but it's gonna be a little it's gonna have more feel if I reduce the velocity on these so we get a little bit more push pull right down up down up down up down up I'll reduce the volume of both of these. Now I'm thinking maybe I want to get a little bit more tone out of my 808. So what I might do, first of all, I'm going to make all these the same volume. So in Logic, I'm just not the volume, velocity. The way you do it in Logic is you click here, and you just raise one of these dots, and then you're all good to go. What I'm thinking is I want to maybe raise these up just a, a couple notes. So I'll just hold Option.
like that a little bit more. There's a little bit more tonality in there, right? Now, if I want to get rid of the transient, right, which is the snappiness of that kick, I can just EQ that out a little bit. show you right off the bat a uh, pretty quick and easy trick for getting your 808s to cut through on a laptop if they're like deep and dark like this. So basically the way you do it is I'm going to go ahead and use a plugin from FabFilter called Saturn 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to target this area, these upper harmonics. And this is a multiband distortion plugin. What it allows me to do is hit it with a different type of different types of saturation. It's a really really amazing plugin. So what I'm going to go for is just heavy saturation. That's too much. That's not that cool. Subtle saturation is not enough. I dig that though. The gentle saturation is pretty nice. And then if I create another band so that we don't saturate anything up there. get a little bit more focus in this area as opposed to getting too much snap back in the kick right we just get more of that that mm, 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 right that stuff so if we hear it off it just sounds like a deep muted kick I even just raise the volume here and maybe now I'll come back into the drum synth itself and adjust like this sweep knob yeah so now it's pretty like nice we get that nice kind of gliding floating 808 feel it's still really heavy now of course the next thing we got to do is throw in a clap so I'm going to use, we can explore the drum synth claps. Actually, you know what? Let's not do that. I, I, I don't really love those. We can go over that next time, but I'm going to jump into the drum kit designer and see if I find a cool clap sound. So I'll go into my electronic drum kits. I'll go to Atlanta and turn off record. So if it's record armed, Right, you can only record, but if you turn off the record arm, you can create a clip. Maybe I was wrong. Oh, no, there you go. So, if you open your pencil tool, you can create the clip. So let's get in there. Stop these; they all start together, and then. All right, we're getting a little bit of Scooby Snacks. So, all right. I was gonna look for the clap sound. I actually hate all of those claps. So let's see if there's a better one. Let's try after party. Not a fan. Um hmm. The funny thing is, is that Ibiza might have a good clap for this. Yeah, we can work with that. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead, right, throw a clap on the two and the four. And 
increase them. So let's stop this and now we need to reduce that. clap I want it to be down the middle so what I'll do is is I'll throw on my gain utility and just click the mono button and now abracadabra the claps are down the middle I'll turn off the gain so they get louder something weird going on with the claps when they mono out you can actually hear them phasing off themselves it's really it's like towards the high end of the frequency which sounds pretty awful so there's actually a way you can get around this it's kind of a sneaky little way so first of all you can also get these guys into here by just holding option and dragging it in so now we have our arrangement view and our loop view. Now if I turn off my loop view, okay. maybe we are not allowed to exist in both places at once. Okay, that's pretty weird. I have to admit, I'm still kind of new to this whole entire workflow, so you'll have to bear with me while I get situated. Um, here, let's just try to hit record. That's weird. Okay. Huh. Alright, well, I will definitely get back to you on that. Let's see this. Enable performance recording. Eh, let's try that. Yeah, I have a feeling that'll do it. There we go. So I take those, leave those, and now why won't you allow me to do cool things in here? There we go. Okay. And now our claps are not triggering. That's super bizarre. Let's try to get these, turn that off. To be perfectly honest, I usually do not upgrade initially because there's a lot of bugs and it seems like there's still some bugs for them to work out with this. So I'm just gonna, for now, just keep working in this loop view, which is not a big deal. Although what I did, well actually, what I wanted to do was show you guys a cool way to get something to be mono, but we'll do that next week. All right, let's stop this. with the clap, what I do want to do is just shorten it. So a quick way to do that is to come into dynamics, come into noise gate, and turn up the threshold. So what a gate does is it allows you to basically say anything that drops below this volume, do not play. And then this release allows me to add, bin, add back in the arrows under the word snap. 
where the audio is coming from. This or this? I think this just allows me to, to go like that. And vice versa. And this just zooms in a little bit more. But I appreciate... What was that? I appreciate that. I could be wrong. Uh, regardless, I'm gonna I'm gonna check into that, and I'll I'll definitely get that um, sorted next. The smattered snap, smart snap. I see. No, so smart snap is just that just has to do with dragging uh, grids around, like so. It's that just has to do with like when I drag it onto the grid. See, that's, that's so strange that it wasn't working before. Um, now it's working totally fine. Okay, see, that's so bizarre, man. All right, anyhow. I'm, I'm going to work in here for, for now because I want to actually go over a couple of cool little things that you can do in the arrangement window. Oh, all right. You win, Blue Sirens. Thanks, dude. That's very, very helpful. Sick. Oh, and I guess you can do it individually as well. That's really cool. That's actually quite useful. All right. Blue Sirens, you are my new favorite person today. Thank you for showing me that and, bail and bailing me out. I'm supposed to know these things. All right. Anyway, so the release, basically what it does is it allows us to make it so that the gate doesn't close too quickly. Um, right, so that's like a little unnatural sounding. beef up the clap a little bit and uh, ooh, someone's blowing up my phone so I'm gonna use actually I'm gonna go ahead and just use some logic stuff so you guys can just in case you don't have third-party plugins I'm gonna go ahead and use this distortion 2 plugin And then just real quick, I'll just come into this, the Vintage EQ collection and go into the 2VQ and just give it a lot of love at about 300, no, 200 actually. clap to be down the middle let's say here's a little trick that you can do in logic so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pan this all the way to the right and this is actually something you can't do in Ableton so this is a big score points for logic moment uh, I'm gonna bounce this in place And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to hit the mono button. So what it does is, all right, a couple important things I have to point out. I realize this went very quickly with that. So there are two types of panning that exist in Logic. The first one 
is this the standard mode that comes with it, right? And you might be like, what do you mean there's two modes of panning? Isn't this all there is? Well, if you hit right click, you get something called stereo pan. The stereo pan is very different than your normal pan. So your normal pan mode is actually a lie. It is not really panning. What it actually is, is it turns down one side to make it seem like it's moved it to the other side. So let me demonstrate this to you. Notice that, keep an eye on where the right side is hitting, right? As I turn it further to the right, all that you will see is that the left side is going to go down and the right side will not get louder. So it stays in the same spot at negative, about negative 9, right? It has not changed at all. Same thing if I turn it to the left, same exact spot. So it makes it seem like we put it over there, but the fact of the matter is we actually lost half of the information. We lost all the right sided information. So if you want to take something that's out wide and get it to be in the middle, sometimes the problem is, like you saw, is that when you put on a utility plugin to mono it out, it starts to phase off itself. And so what I decided to do to work around that is a little trick is I panned it all the way to the right and I bounced it in place. So now my bounce in place is just only right sided information, which is actually mono. Now what I do is, is I hit the mono button, and now it's right down the middle. And now my clap is in the middle. And it's really quiet. So what I'll do is I'll open up this regions button and just turn up the gain. Now, that clap is not snapping enough and so logic doesn't really have a plugin that specializes in, in helping with this but um, there are some amazing plugins from other manufacturers and so I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, plugin Alliance SPL transient designer plus to make this really snappy What's up, Nigo? Or should I say Martin? That's without it. And with it, you can hear that it creates a little bit more of a snap. Turn that down just a little. Now the next thing I'm going to do, these are hi-hats, right? Is I'm actually going to make the hi-hat pattern a little bit cooler. I'm going to do a little bit of a roll right here. So we're going too slow for that. 30 second note to be cool, but if we go like this, now I'm going to increase the length of this loop, or actually I'm going to use a cooler command, I'm going to use control L, which converts my loops to regions, other way to do that is you right click and do convert loops to regions, very quick. Very snappy, very useful. I also like that. Uh, that's kind of for me a score one for um, for uh, Logic Moment because Ableton does not have one of those, uh, and that actually was useless because <laughs> I, did. I, I was just gonna do this anyway. Nonetheless, there we go. And so I want to increase the non-roll section because rolls I think are kind of annoying if you do them all at the same time. And so what I'll do is a little bit of like a like Metro Boomin style technique. So it's going to be a kind of glide down. Maybe I'll even go down one more, open up the sampler increase the range that it can go and go right there Ooh, 
That's just cool. Now we're getting somewhere. All right. So let me try to get a kick pattern going on in there now. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my drum synth again. I'll just put it in mono because I don't need my kick to be stereo. And let's choose a tight kick. That honestly sounds like a kind of a cool kick. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to hit the kicks on most of the downbeats, not hit them on all the 808s, because that's kind of silly. The kick is supposed to like emphasis certain mo emphasize certain moments um, in the 808 rhythm. So I'm going to go like that. Quantize my imperfection. And then let's raise it to. I like that right there. I'm going to turn the decay down. That works for me. Turn up the snappiness. a little bit. to 127. Decrease the snappiness. I'll just roll back the attack now. your kick to just punch have way more weight 63 hertz or 60 hertz regardless of that range just crank it and then just give it a little bit of tickle on top so that way we don't lose the transient of the kick when it cuts through while still gaining the bass Give it a little bit right there. Now I gotta say, 
I'm a, thank you, uh, Martin, for saying that the kick sounds awesome. I happen to think it sounds pretty decent myself. So I'm going to save this real quick. Let's say Logic TB, week one. All right. So I'm a big proponent of designing your kick and bass so that you don't have to sidechain. Right? Especially if it's something like this. Every time you sidechain your 808 to your kick, you're losing the power of the 808. So I'd rather just have my kick be powerful enough to cut through my 808. Right? That way it's always feeling really boxy. And, I mean, not boxy, but really like plump and round and beautiful. So now if I were to... If I'm ever going to do any amount of sidechain, what it would really be to do would just be to make it so that there's no distortion that occurs between the two. So that's what I'll do right now, is I'll just change it, let's do my kick, and I'll just make it so that literally just like one to two decibels of gain reduction, which is barely any sidechaining, just so there's no distortion. And I want it to jump off really quick, so let's say 20 milliseconds. My ratio should be 10, so it's really going to just immediately just duck down. Thank you, Blue Sirens. Yeah, we're actually, so yeah, dude, we're gonna, I'm going to be doing this every week pretty much now from now on uh, with the Logic Show. So I'm really excited to share a lot of little Logic tricks that I use. So there we go. That's just that's enough, right? You don't need a crazy amount of side chain. Cuz this way you're not losing really any, you know, power. And now we have a really tight concentrated low end that's not distorting, which is very important. So let me now add like some melodic content, right? So I'm a big fan of like chill hip hop. Um, even though this might seem like it's really intense, one of the, my favorite things to do in music is make something that seems like it's intense, like an intense bass line, but then use like a, a chill chord progression to actually like kind of balance, balance it out. So I have to cut this clip right there. I'll tell you what, I'm actually going to bounce this in place again because I just, it's an eyesore. So I'm going to just call this clap now. So now I have my clap. Get the hell out of here. Now you're mono. Let's start from bar one. I don't know what we're doing over here. So I'm going to go ahead and play some kind of like chilled out. Or I'm going to say I'm not, I'm actually not going to play. I'm terrible at the keyboard. But I'm going <laughs> to like program in some chilled out chords. So let's figure out, first of all, what note we're playing here. So it would seem like we're playing a G, but it's distinctly possible that that's not the case. This is definitely actually a little bit of an awkward tuning on this 808. I think it's tuned in between G and uh, G flat. So I'm going to go ahead and just yeah, I think technically the G overtone is in there, but for some reason the G flat, it, it feels more correct to me. Um, but that's actually kind of irrelevant. So. What I'm going to do is I'll, I'll play both and just see which one works. So I will play the G flat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, uh, a minor 7 add 9, which will basically negate the consideration of key because it's going to sound beautiful. <laughs> Let's see which one sounds better. I don't think it really matters to be honest. So I'm gonna come in here and just program these real quick. So I want my sustain to be high because it's a pad. 
Uh, I want my attack to be slow because it's bad. I want my release to be marginal. And in order to get a good pad sound, what I like to do is put this in the middle, detune this oscillator a little bit. Let's try that. Yeah, that's tight. Actually, lower these. Let's see what happens if we drop these in octave. They might be too muddy, but we can also just voice them. Yeah, it's a little muddy. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of inversion. This is a very jazzy sound too, which is tight. Then we get this, oh, we get that minor second voicing, which is super dissonant. Let's raise them up an octave and see what that got us. Nah, I'll just stick with our original voicing up here. I'm definitely going to make this a lot uh, of a nicer sound. So One of the reasons I just decreased the attack is because the glide was sort of making it almost smoother in the attack and it was taking it longer for the harmonic content to register. So it was sort of like feeling delayed, which was, you know, not the greatest. That sounds really cool. So one thing that we could do to kind of solve this voicing situation where I just want them to be a little thicker is to just take some of the middle notes and then also put the bass in so that it doesn't feel like we're doing a slash chord. Now, 
I think I'm gonna layer a piano sound with these. There's actually a really good one. You know, let's just use Logic. Logic has. Oh, does it still have it? It must have a good sampler still, a good piano sound. Let's search high and low. So all I'm gonna do is just copy these chords. Wow, that's so harsh. I apologize. The blue ears off. Still harsh. No, why would you ever compress the piano? So I'm gonna drop these down because pianos do better in low octaves and synths when they're voiced. Yes. I'm gonna put this in a lot of reverb. I'll use Space Designer. I'm just kind of playing silly games at this point with these voicing um, without much giving it much thought. Oops. So we can get... This will be nice. Oh yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, this is like some super chord type shit that like is almost impossible to play as a, as a human. <laughs> jump in a second but I'll just do one quick thing so let's try a studio strings real quick now I'm gonna take this exact same voicing I don't like that at all uh, okay I'm not gonna use the studio strings I can tell immediately I'm not gonna be into that so let's just pull up retro synth I love retro synth the more that you hang out with me in logic you're gonna realize I abuse retro synth I love this thing so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly program in a sound, a synth sound, and I'm going to And I'm going to put that in a lot of reverb. I'll use the same space designer. Reverb. For continuity's sake. Yeah, cause I, okay, maybe I need a lot more reverb. I do. That's what I want. A big, so let's go synth stabs.
piano chords and see what that feels like. Yep. I'm gonna reduce the piano chords in volume. Yeah, I, I'm very into that. All right, so I am gonna have to jump in a second because I'm running around like a madman today. But um, thank you, those of you that tuned in for uh, tuning into the first week of Logic TV. Really, really sorry for the confusion with the timing and everything. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm in the middle of a move, and so it just unfortunately made it a little bit difficult for me to be able to start on time. But nonetheless, you know, if there's a will, there's a way, and we were really committed to trying to bring you guys some content today. So I'm really glad, you know, and appreciative for those of you uh, that stuck around. Um, yeah, so, you know, moving on forward, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on hip hop every week in Logic. Uh, for the foreseeable future, I'm not going to put a date on it. I'm not going to put uh, a limit on it. Um, but we'll, you know, from week to week, be letting you know and updating you. So for those of you that joined us for the first time, I'm Lewis Beck. This was The Logic Show. And I'm an instructor at 343 Labs in New York City. And we are a music production school. And we do in-person and online classes. Now, of course, we're not doing in-person classes because, you know, the world is insane right now. But um, we are really hoping that soon we're going to be able to start doing that, uh, you know, health and safety permitting. Uh, now, with all that being said, I definitely have to jump. Um, if you dig the content from today or from other times and you've tuned in before, please, please, please subscribe and spread the word. You know, we are uh, a pretty new school. We've only been around for about two years. But, you know, we've been growing at a really rapid pace and we're just so committed to trying to bring great content and educational material to, you know, more people. So the more people you can let know, it'll be really awesome and helpful. Um, anyway, yeah, I got to run, but this has been super real.